let me start at once. Um, Satomi told uh, the most important thing, so I don't uh, have to repeat it where Kucha uh, was and, and when. Uh, so let us uh, start with this uh, representation. There were uh, caves uh, Satomi um, told um, us about with um, program of paintings, uh, which was uh, actually not um, very specific. It changed from one cave to, to another. Yeah, and uh, only in a couple of uh, such caves, there was an altar in the middle. Uh, so the um, most important focus of uh, entire cave was on the uh, uh, rear, uh, rear wall. Um, those are those earlier caves, traditionally um, called first Indo-Iranian style, um, Vinyato and Hiyama rather used um, cave, um, caves of um, painted in, in style, uh, style A. Um, as Satomi said already, typical for second um, uh, Indo-Iranian style or tradition uh, B, um, is the central uh, pillar cave. Uh, and the most important uh, point is that we have so many of them. Uh, as you see, just uh, one next to uh, another. Important to remember that most of uh, such caves uh, are really small. And we are talking about like uh, 20 square meters and there is still that what we call central pillar uh, there. So um, there are actually like, like in, in the room, in, in the apartment, really uh, not large. Um, the um, program of, um, of paintings uh, comes from, from um, uh, the function, how such um, uh, case were used. There is this production uh, way inside. You can see it commambulate um, about so-called central pillar, which is actually um, you circumambulate uh, around the Buddha in the central niche. So that's that's the point. Uh, such caves um, look all sort of uh, similar with this uh, two large uh, doors. Yeah, on the uh, on the, the rear uh, and the niche for the central uh, Buddha. Uh, there are differences, of course. Some niches are for standing Buddha, some are for, for uh, sitting Buddhas. Uh, in some, uh, like middle, in uh, upper row, there are such holes. Um, uh, here were visible. Uh, the tradition. Uh, because of whatever reason, um, depicts um, mountain um, landscape here. Yeah, and some of such landscapes uh, were three di dimensional. So in these holes, there were yeah, just pieces of wood uh, worked like, uh, like mountains. Now, what Saturn you already mentioned, in this, uh, on this main wall uh, of central pillar caves, in most of the cases, um, we have representation of Indra and Panchashika who visit the Buddha meditating in the cave. Um, the most important point about that uh, is that these pictures uh, are absolutely fascinating. Um, this is what um, the viewer sees when he comes into the, um, uh, the cave. Um, it focus because there are, as you see on the right uh, in the drawings, better to, to observe, uh, there are deities flowing, flowing down. Um, there are Panchashika on one side, Indra on another. Uh, so they all concentrate the view uh, on the Buddha, uh, on the statue of the uh, Buddha, which was once uh, placed in the, in the main niche. Now, uh, Panchashika is quite well um, recognizable. Uh, Bo Vina is a really interesting question. It was uh, really known in, in Kucha, or only depictions of such uh, instruments were, were known. Uh, characteristic, and not only in this uh, case in Kucha, uh, that uh, Kucha paintings really illustrate words, meaning of the words. Uh, Panchashika has punch, so five 
shikas on the top of his uh, head. There, there are like five uh, knots. Nothing like that appears uh, ever in, in India, but um, here the painters really illustrate the Sanskrit uh, words. Now, <clears throat> behind this uh, main wall, uh, this is what we call Parinirvana space, um, scenes uh, standing in connection with the uh, death uh, of the Buddha, uh, like distribution of, uh, of the relics uh, or also yeah, also here still uh, in these corridors. So there are uh, three corridors at the uh, rear, uh, which means six walls, and all the six walls uh, were in many, uh, many cases, not all, there are also exceptions here, but um, quite often all six uh, walls were covered uh, with uh, representations of different uh, episodes uh, standing in connection with uh, Parinirvana of the Buddha. Now, uh, as I answer the question by um, Henry, uh, when the viewer went out from, uh, from these dark corridors, um, watching the death of the Buddha, or also watching the um, monks um, during the first council. Uh, so, but still the past connection with, with the Buddha definitely um, uh, through relics or, or, or monks, uh, but uh, that was all the past and was coming back to, to the main chamber, what you could see, but going, uh, out of the cave, uh, that was the future Buddha, Bodhisattva, uh, in Tushita heaven. Uh, most, uh, it is very much, that's actually what we all supposed. Uh, this is uh, all Maitreya, but um, it cannot be uh, set for center. Uh, on this um, wall, um, so front wall above the, uh, above the entrance door, also, Mara Vijaya is depicted in several instances, um, which is also of importance when we uh, try to uh, reconstruct um, the entire program of, of the caliph. So <clears throat> what we have, um, there is this Parinivana space uh, at the rear, uh, the cave with uh, Indra and Panchashika visiting the Buddha in the cave, meditating in the cave, Maitreya uh, or Maravijaya. And so it looks like um, really sort of program and um, painters and definitely also the donors or owners of, uh, of these caves um, wanted to um, have something. Um, well, the question is why they all wanted to have something similar. Uh, that's the real question, which is difficult to, to, uh, to guess. But um, also for us and probably also for, for uh, them, 150, 500 years ago, uh, also they wanted to have a program of, uh, of entire religious, uh, well, difficult to say what for they, they were going, that, that, that's still another question, but when they were visiting the cave and probably had a monk who were explaining all this uh, painting, so um, they wanted to have religious experience of uh, one sort of or another. So to that we can say that um, um, between this um, uh, Indra and Panchashika or um, uh, Maitreya in, in the front wall, um, there are most of uh, representations um, and there are so many, which is really absolutely exciting. And we have our problems with explaining them and um, putting them, them together. So on the walls, uh, as you see, there are square representations. Um, in most of the cases, like um, in, here in 163, there are eight uh, scenes on, on one wall. Yeah, and really many 
diamond shape um, or mountain shape uh, representations in the uh, barrel vault. Uh, just uh, counting them, um, typical but only well preserved uh, because without gilding, uh, in cave 171 in Kizil, we have uh, on one side of the barrel vault 30 scenes with the Buddha, six Jatakas, which are here uh, below, it makes um, on two sides 72 narratives only on the barrel vault. It's really a lot. Uh, when caves are bigger, this is monumental image cave, which is simply bigger, uh, around 100 uh, narratives only on the barrel vault. Uh, to that um, comes, like here, 16 on, on the walls, but um, can also be, uh, be more. Uh, in several cases, uh, underneath this um, square uh, representations on the wall, there was still a, a row with, with Jatakas again. So underneath, as if showing something. So maybe the, the life of the Buddha is based on uh, Jatakas, on life from, from, uh, from the past. Uh, again, when you really start to, to count uh, all that uh, representations. Um, hundred uh, in one interior is uh, actually even more. Add to that uh, all these occurrences in um, uh, Parinirvana space, uh, Indra and Panchashika uh, and Maitreya, so at least hundred um, narratives in one interiors. Um, which is difficult to uh, explain why they uh, were just so fascinating by this um, huge uh, number of, uh, of narratives. Uh, but also um, the question appears, what for? Um, could um, these narratives, especially the small ones um, in, in uh, diamond shape uh, fields on the barrel vaults, uh, could they all be uh, understood? Um, there are really big uh, questions, and uh, I hope one day uh, we will know more about that, but um, for the time being, it's really difficult to, to say. Now, um, how this um, bigger uh, representations uh, correspond together. Definitely they do. When you have Parinirvana, who said before, you go out and you see the future Buddha, that's absolutely uh, makes sense that uh, after seeing all the uh, past, you, you would uh, like to, to um, see the future uh, Maitreya. Uh, I also think that um, there was really big, um, importance of the monks. Um, um, it is all over in the Buddhist world that um, uh, there is no difference between uh, monks on, on the holy time together with, with the Buddha or like here in the first council uh, and how monks were depicted temp contemporary monks. Um, because th that, that was on purpose. They really wanted to show um, and also monks had to say something in, in for the decoration of this case, they really wanted to show themselves like continuation of this um, uh, older, uh, older times. Uh, so Maitreya in uh, Tushita uh, really um, were um, suiting perfectly uh, well to that. Now, um, Indra <coughs> and Panchashika and the future Buddha uh, Maitreya, this is a little bit more complicated, but actually um, what I said uh, before, just working without uh, preconception is as good uh, when you uh, work with Kucha. Uh, certainly gave us quite good uh, reason to uh, understand this um, Panchashika and Indra um, like um, representations of uh, Indra Shaila Guha. And actually, uh, we will probably never know if uh, this narrative was um, uh, here indeed meant. Um, 
well, of, because of whatever reason, uh, this representation was really of huge uh, importance for, for Kucha. And um, just the main wall, the main uh, representation for entire cave, and possibly also for, for uh, us to understand the rest of, uh, of entire uh, decoration in, in the interior. Um, there is uh, some of the, those pictures are absolutely terrific. Uh, you see here two Vajrapanis on the side, um, uh, deities flying down, uh, many uh, rishis, uh, depictions of, uh, of mountains. There is a Bodhisattva in Mandorla standing in the middle. I have absolutely no idea uh, who that is. Uh, so that's one of such questions that maybe one day we'll be able to, to uh, answer. Um, Indra Shaila Guha uh, representations are many in, uh, uh, in India and they start uh, early already in second century BCE. We have with uh, inscriptions in Asala Guha in, uh, in Barud, we have inscription in Kanaganahari. So um, that was uh, important uh, narrative, uh, but only in Gandhara it starts to be so great that actually the representation is um, not really suitable to the um, to the narrative um, okay indra was coming asking some uh, questions about meditation and, and uh, about uh, philosophy uh, which some other people of or gods ask on the uh, other occasion what is so funny about this in the shaila guha uh, narrative um, as you see here, uh, Panjashika and um, Indra are really tiny in connection uh, with the large Buddha and all this uh, uh, fantastic landscape uh, around. Uh, this was a question uh, asked by uh, Julian Gray in this really fascinating paper, uh, which appeared only in um, um, not in, in English, in uh, Korean. Uh, I really hope he will uh, publish that uh, in different places. It was a conference to, uh, 2009. Uh, I was also there, probably never appear. Uh, so um, Joo Hyung must uh, publish the uh, paper somewhere else. Uh, what is so interesting about this uh, paper? Uh, Ri ask. Just my question, why actually this Indra Shaila Guha, why was uh, that of, uh, of such importance? And how can we be sure that uh, Gandhara, where we don't have a inscription, uh, indeed uh, shows just this event, uh, especially in Mathura, um, that's quite important um, uh, point because um, of uh, this representation of, of the uh, above the entrance to the monastery on one side of this archipraf uh, there is a body tree so enlightenment and on another side there is the buddha uh, meditating in the cave panchashika with uh, vina on one side and indra on another uh, uh, re uh, recognized that this I don't know if you can see my, my cursor. Uh, so um, uh, this is the Skapardin Buddha, uh, which is actually um, only for, for um, time, only short after the enlightenment. Now, <clears throat> there are some texts and uh, the text uh, might very well be of importance for uh, Gandhara and also for, for Kucha. Uh, they are uh, telling us another story. Uh, the Buddha meditates again in the cave, uh, but the time is short after the enlightenment. Uh, Indra, uh, who is presuming that the Buddha uh, will not, uh, is not going to teach, uh, arrives there with Panchashika, and then the story continues in the same way. 
uh, and um, Brahma comes and asks the Buddha to preach uh, in this uh, T186, uh, which is early translation of um, Narita Vistara. It was Brahma who sends Panchashika uh, with Indra uh, to the cave. So we are in this time very short after the enlightenment. Uh, what Ri uh, tries to say is uh, actually this is what um, actually makes um, the event so important, mm -hmm. um, not just um, some questions of, of Indra, but this um, prelude um, to the first sermon that what would be of the real importance. So uh, we will probably never know which um, event was uh, depicted in Kucha, but um, uh, I can say that Brahma, who is actually playing no role in um, Indra Shaila Guha episode, uh, is here really prominent. He is appearing in the very middle <coughs> of the representation like like um, like here yeah or so not only like um pound down to indra because that's uh, happened many times in in kucha but he is really prominent uh, in the very middle yeah, or this is uh, brahma uh, who is ask, uh, falling down in in, in front uh, of the buddha not Indra, but this is Brahma. To that we can say um, that actually uh, representations of um, uh, Indra or Indra and Brahma, uh, or first of all Brahma, uh, asking the Buddha to preach uh, scenes which are so prominent in Gandhara, for example, they are not existent in, uh, in Kucha. Uh, we have um, in 110 uh, or in, in some um, um, tiny scenes on the uh, Bara vaults, um, only Brahma standing in, in uh, asking the Buddha to preach, but um, and there are actually representations uh, about the three goddess uh, is, um, uh, is there. So actually the three goddess coming with, with the uh, medium for the uh, Sikh Buddha. So that would, um, uh, if we presume uh, Ali was right with his uh, interpretation, it would really make this uh, main um, uh, narrative of Kucha really prominent and uh, explain such importance. Uh, that um, goes very well together uh, with um, Mara Vijaya uh, depicted on, on another side, uh, like what we had in, in Mathura, this famous uh, architrave, uh, which, as I said before, uh, is shown uh, several times in, in Kucha. So uh, now they, they were this most important um, uh, representations if it is something that um, the Buddha has been asked by uh, Brahma to, to preach and is preaching. So maybe all the uh, rest, what we have in the main hall, uh, is uh, simply depictions of what the Buddha is preaching, which would also uh, make a lot of uh, sense. Uh, square uh, caves uh, below, mountain uh, shape cave uh, depictions uh, above. Uh, sometimes uh, we have inscriptions. So if there is inscription, we can say for sure what is depicted in uh, the fantastic uh, paper. Uh, Robert Art and uh, Satomi Hiyama explain some uh, uh, representations like uh, this one about the uh, girl Roshika who was killed by the cow and was reborn like a princess Muktika. Uh, once uh, recognized, um, you can recognize the same narrative uh, several times. Uh, the point is, and this is something absolutely fantastic what we meet in Kucha uh, everywhere, that um, in the one and the same pictorial unit, uh, we can have, um, well, two different incarnations. 
Yeah, on the right, upper right side, um, this Rohika being killed by the cow and uh, lower left, uh, she was reborn um, like a queen and is visiting um, the Buddha. Or maybe the Buddha tells her uh, about her uh, earlier incarnation. So uh, we would have uh, the content of um, his speech here. This is exactly how to represent uh, what the Buddha is saying. That's actually the most important point uh, for this uh, seminar here. Um, I um, used before the name visual, uh, the term of visual language. Um, we try to understand it slowly, but um, it is extremely difficult. And I must say, um, like 15 years ago, nobody would ever expect that we have uh, in one picture um, um, representations of two different um, lives. Like uh, Atita Vatu and Pachupanavatu in, in, uh, in one uh, representation. But um, of course, there is also more uh, when we see the tree above um, the Buddha at once to be understood. Uh, we are outdoors. Uh, there is a lady in crown uh, with halo around the uh, head and uh, female uh, servants above. This is the queen. Um, so to um, take care uh, about such um, tiny um, elements. It's actually what, uh, what is so um, difficult. And I must say, we're only collecting um, uh, data uh, about it. Uh, still need a couple of years to uh, understand that. Uh, the big question is, for example, Vajrapani, uh, who appears in many scenes. Um, another question, why not everywhere, like in Muktika narrative note. Uh, and Vajrapani has uh, different forms. Uh, I can easily imagine that um, his person was also conveyor of, of the meaning. We still don't know which meaning. Uh, sort of upaya kausalia when he is uh, really dangerous, like um, in the lower uh, row with three eyes. Uh, so difficult conversion, uh, or maybe he's standing for geographical place. Uh, I can only say with what I was working previously, this uh, Vajrapani looking like um, uh, handsome uh, youth. This is how he, and without exception, uh, this is how uh, he is depicted in the uh, narratives about Parinyavana. That how, how um, he's always there. So um, uh, one day we will um, recognize, we will collect them all. Uh, who is we? Uh, Buddhist murals of Kucha on the Northern Silk Road. Uh, that's a project uh, of the Saxon Academy of uh, sciences and humanities in uh, Leipzig. Uh, and there, when we collected all Vajrapanis, um, maybe we will know more. It is coming soon, uh, actually only in a couple of, of weeks, we will go online. Um, now, <clears throat> I should stop already. Oh, you can go on talk if you want. Yeah. Yes. Sometime. Okay, thank you. So um, once again, uh, how can we have only a couple of um, uh, examples uh, and um, that um, preconception, uh, if you ask me a question, um, uh, what we have depicted here, uh, of course, the teaching of, of the Buddha. Uh, and uh, of course, highly religious and so on and so on. Uh, two years ago, I would say, of course, what else? Uh, now, after writing the book uh, about demons, uh, I'm absolutely not positive about that any longer uh, because we have so many of them. Actually, there are caves uh, with three narratives out of eight, uh, three narratives on one wall uh, with demons. Um, so there was sort of uh, apotropaic um, uh, and um, feeling apotropaic and need for, for apotropaic depictions here. Um, 
so that's not only meditation, not on, but um, that also gives us um, answer probably, probably, um, for whom uh, were such depictions. Um, so actually, uh, the main answer of uh, all such uh, paintings are the Buddha has uh, all these um, dangerous um, demons under control. Um, this is not for monks. Uh, they don't have um, reason to, to be afraid of uh, them, but um, for lay uh, people and um, such definitely apotropaic representations can also be depicted uh, where we have Maitreya. So that also gives us maybe Maitreya is also sort of apotropaic representations. So demons and um, uh, all that um, villain uh, beings uh, who are all uh, adoring uh, the Buddha. Now, uh, really very short, um, uh, how can we recognize? Of course, we can recognize uh, some representations that it's not easy, but um, um, in the last years, uh, several depictions uh, were recognized. Uh, there are people in every uh, corner uh, under the uh, rain of dust in the city of uh, Roruka. Once recognized, you will find them everywhere. Uh, again, uh, there is a monk, there is a lay person uh, taking measurements, and here somebody is building something. Um, this is Jetavana being built, uh, and at the same time, a pavilion in, in heaven uh, appears. So, story about um, Anatta Pindika. Um, there are several uh, representations, like about um, Elapatra, who comes like a Nagaraja, but also like a snake uh, with a tree uh, growing on his head. The point is that um, uh, in the same uh, picture, we have why he was uh, born like Nagaraja with this uh, causing terrible uh, pains uh, tree because he destroyed the tree like he was uh, when he was a monk in his previous life. So again, uh, two lives in uh, one pictorial unit. Uh, we have what the Buddha is talking about, like a famous simile of, uh, of the turtle. So the Buddha is talking that to, to, um, to the monks and the turtle is uh, depicted also in the, in the uh, painting. Uh, interestingly about that and what we really try to uh, check just in every uh, study, in every representation, if we uh, have um, survived uh, Tokarian uh, tradition, and um, here is of importance because this is not um, a yoke. Uh, the turtle is uh, going to, to, to the uh, surface of the ocean uh, through, uh, but this is a log or a plank, which is really depicted on the uh, representations. So, so many uh, depictions, uh, Jatakas and um, others, um, can we recognize them all? We are really trying, we are really trying um, Sometimes uh, we are successful. Uh, as Christopher already said, these uh, Jatakas, which are reduced to one uh, scene, they are actually easy to recognize, like somebody is being eaten uh, here. Uh, when you recognize ones, uh, for example, Kshantivadin, whom that king um, uh, cut uh, the hands of, um, the same uh, picture will continue like 20 times um, survived uh, representations. We have Vishvantara. Um, so here, that's the most typical case that the lowest more uh, row, the, the Ajatakas above that there are what is called Avadana. I'm not positive if uh, that's, that's sure, uh, that's correct, but um, yeah, just, just to recognize them. And again, um, we would be lost if um, not, um, we know that, that uh, representations are repeating. Uh, so Shasha jumping into uh, fire and Jatakas in the lower row, uh, or, or Yasha um, 
leaving uh, his sandals on the side of uh, Baraka River and uh, crossing the river, uh, going to, to the Buddha uh, representations, which uh, repeat and repeat and repeat. Now, uh, what is it uh, all actually? So um, there are mountains somehow, and there in the median strip, um, uh, flying arhats um, and everything what can fly, like like garudas, for example. Uh, of course, uh, we tend to um, give um, meaning uh, to that. Uh, I also think that there is a meaning if uh, we can recognize the meaning that's still an op open question. So here, um, the general um, understanding that there are Buddhas and there are monks uh, flying because they can meditate and they, they meditate uh, during the flying. But um, actually, when you collect them all, what I did uh, recently, yeah, I really collect uh, all preserved um, median strip. Uh, important thing is that we have here uh, three different uh, sorts uh, of flying uh, person. Uh, with mandola and um, nimbus, with only nimbus and without anything. So there are monks and, uh, and Buddhas, um, but the question is, who is that uh, person in the middle? Um, with no exception, all these uh, narratives in square uh, scenes or in, in uh, diamond shaped uh, skins, uh, scenes, uh, the Buddha is always depicted also with the body uh, nimbles. Um, Buddha without um, body nimbles is actually not present in, in Kucha, at least not in first and second Indo-Iranian style. Um, I'm absolutely fascinating. That was a, a book by uh, our first um, uh, Leipzig Kucha Studies paper by um, Ines Konchak. And she recognized the three sorts of uh, arhats that are depicted here uh, together. And um, so whom we have is Arhat, Pratyeka Buddha, and Samyaksam Buddha, monks in Samadhi, and on the right side, uh, there is a city of Nirvana. It's really fantastic representation of uh, visual representation, how, how Nirvana looks like. <coughs> Here inside, we have again these three thoughts, um, uh, differentiation, uh, without uh, nimbus, with head nimbus, and with head and body nimbus. And there are the three types of arhats who can reach the city of Nirvana. So whom we have uh, depicted in most of the cases, because um, monks are actually only in the earliest caves and in the latest caves. Uh, Buddhas are very, so Samyaksam Buddhas are absolutely uh, seldom. Uh, in most of the cases uh, we have, um, most probably uh, are uh, Pratyeka Buddhas. So uh, where do they fly? Um, I don't know. Uh, this is an open question, maybe one of uh, you can say, uh, maybe to uh, Lake Anavatapta uh, to say the stories how they were enlightened. Um, this is at least a possibility for that. Thank you very much.